Wow. Now. Okay, hello Avia. Hey. Hey Sylvie. So today we are going to do something exciting together. Something that we were planning to do for a long, 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 long time. Years. And we haven't. And now, because of this weird times, we have a chance to do it. Exactly. So we're going to, so I'm going to do some singing and some voice work and you're going to do some drawing. And we're both going to open uh, this really special place of creativity together that uh, we're going to give voice to the drawings and we give uh, color to the voice and vice versa. And we, we start this really be beautiful weaving together. Yes. Um, and uh, yeah, so you invited me to this and I'm really, really excited. So thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for joining. <laughs> And maybe to say also about the space that um, we just give a little uh, sneak or, or um, preview into what's possible to discover your own inner space, especially now really relevant during Corona times and how to sometimes we are scared of space and freedom and scared of a white canvas and don't, not knowing what to do and all things pop up like judgment of not being good enough and all those things so this is really becoming very visible in singing as well as in drawing and we want to encourage people to overcome the judging mind and just enjoy um, free-flowing creative expression again and with the potential to truly find themselves while doing it mm -hmm. yeah i think this time i don't i you know it's a, such an unusual time in history and this time we never return and this time presents uh, challenges and so many opportunities as well uh, and for me it comes after a time where i wasn't performing for a long time so i'm a voice i'm a voice artist and a singer and I do all kinds of creative projects with other disciplines of art. Um, so it came after a time when I was already in a place of silence, in a place where I didn't know what's the next thing, and then it just came. And it's kind of reality just gave me this presence that I, just to pin me down and really, really go in. And it's really hard, you know, sometimes I feel that it's beautiful and that there's amazing opportunities and there's big creativity and sometimes it's completely flattened and I feel nothing. Um, but all those things are, are those, uh, those things that are giving us the opportunity to really go deeper into ourselves and to find that inner freedom. Yeah. That really is so much, we are, all of us are yearning for that freedom. You know, we don't want to be only outside outside is, is 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 nice for a while but it's not really the answer inside find that peace inside this is like what we all looking for every human being so my 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 way of finding it a lot of the times it's through a uh, text and true voice and combining the two um so i come from israel and i live now in ireland that's where me and sylvia met uh, 2007 I don't know yeah. how many years 13 years ago and um, and I work with sacred texts I work with sacred music and uh, sacred texts in Hebrew sacred texts in uh, in in the Celtic tradition the Christian traditions and uh, the other traditions and I find how those texts move inside me and how they contribute to my evolution as a singer and to evolution of my voice mm -hmm. and, of and, your how they, and how they give me wisdom as well to communicate to just on an ordinary level with yeah. my friends and family so i want uh, just uh, to, to introduce a text uh, a little text that comes from a very ancient tradition in the in the jewish uh, um, from the jewish tradition it's a text that we don't really know who wrote it. There's many people say many things. Some say it's Abraham, you know, Abraham wrote it. But I think the, uh, most of the people now say that it was written in the first or second um, century. 
uh, no one knows who mm -hmm. wrote it. So that, the, this text is called the Book of Creation, and it basically describes the creation of the world through the ten spheres, which is the ten essences of uh, in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go into it now, but there's the, the idea of there is ten essences, like ten chakras, that they are uh, connecting to to equality in humanity and also uh, and in 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 the essence of God and equality in the body. So so the world is created with ten essences, with ten spheres, and also with uh, with the alphabet, with um, with words, with breath. Mm -hmm. So God created the world with breath, basically. Yeah. And in that text, there's a lot, uh, a lot of descriptions of um, ideas of space. Now, the text is, is, in order to learn it, we need to many, many years of learning, but we're not going to get into the, uh, really what it is and because we can't. Um, and also, I don't really understand. It's a bit like poetry, very, very deep, very deep poetry. Mm -hmm. So the text goes like that. I will write it. I will say it in Hebrew and then I say it in English. Okay. So you can hear the the music of Hebrew as opposed okay. to the music of English. Yes. Eser sfirot blima, medatan eser she'en le'en sof. Omek reshit ve'omek acharit, omek tov ve'omek ra, omek rom ve'omek tachat, omek mizrach ve'omek ma'arav. עומק צפון ועומק דרום, אדון יחיד אל מלך נאמן, מושל בכולם ממעון קודשו עד עולמי עד. I love this language. Nice. And the English, ten all spheres, they number ten but have no end. The depth of first, the depth of last, the depth of goodness, the depth of evil, the depth of above, the depth of below, the depth of east, the depth of west, the depth of north, the depth of south, true trusting queen, she abides within all, all rests within her for all eternity. So two things I need to say that in the original text it doesn't say queen, it says it says king. Yeah. <laughs> We're all um, goddess oriented and we are renewal, <laughs> renewing the text. So we put the queen, uh, my teacher did that. Uh, she put the queen instead of the king. Yeah. I think for us as women, I think it makes more, it feels more uh, close, it feels more real. Yeah. And another thing is uh, the use of the word depth. And in Hebrew, it's omek, omek. Mm -hmm. And in Hebrew, it's more interesting uh, in terms of the vocality of it because Omek, it's like you really go uh, uh, into that, that uh, the first letter is Ein, which is uh, really resides here in the throat. Mm -hmm. And it, it looks like um, a bit like this, uh, how to say, it looks like an I. Yeah. But like that. Okay. Okay. It looks like a sack, you know, like a sack of... Um, I'm going to show you like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, what it, so it has that sense of space when we say it and also when we write it. Yeah. Um, the depth doesn't, in English, it doesn't have the same. We understand the depth mentally, that it's, it's, it means something deep. Yeah. But we don't have the same kind of, you know, wisdom yeah. that the Hebrew language has. We don't feel it in our bodies when we say depth. Yeah. We don't feel it in our body and also we don't see it written. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's what's special about the Hebrew language. Mm -hmm. um, so so what's interesting about this text is, um, is that that use of the depth, that the, the description of the depth has it moves through different different places in in that space mm -hmm. that, that um, God or the goddess created, and it gives you the depth of first, the depth of last. So it's the depth of time, the depth of goodness, the depth of evil, the depth of morality, the depth of above and below, the depth of east and west, 
the depth of north and south. So it gives you different kind of depths. Yeah. And, and it helps you to really understand that you can create a wor world by exploration of this depth, different qualities of depth. So in this time in the corona, we are all, um, you know, experience all kinds of emotions, you know, all kinds of things happen. Yeah. And uh, those things doesn't happen outside, it happens inside of us most, most of the time. So the opportunity in this time is to go in, into the depth of who we are and to refer to that depth, not as a place that is narrow and, uh, and like really narrow and miserable and that you can't breathe, but to go into that depth and you imagine in, that, in, in that in that depth there's a space. So me and Sylvie, we met in the Buddhist center um 12 years 12 years ago where we had a chance to study with many teachers and um practice buddhism and meditation and that was amazing time in our life yeah but i think both of us even though i don't know how much we practice but some of, we, we both practice in some way but i think we practice all the time you know as mothers as a, as an artist practice with our emotions practice that wisdom that we were given mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that really stayed with me from that time was um, when, the th when Sogar and Poche told us that the way to deal with a, a negative emotion is to let it loose in an open field. Like the way you let uh, a an, an wild animal loose in an open field. You yeah. don't try to control it. You don't try to contain it. Yeah. You let it loose. You give it and space. Like, exactly. Yeah. You allow it to be, yeah. So when we reach into the depths of who we are, I would like to think that we reach into a vast space of depth. Yeah. Not into a narrow place uh, of like a well that, we, that someone threw us into a well and, you know, we don't know how to get out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But we are reaching into this, we are sliding into the rabbit hole into that depth, into our body, into our emotions. But what is waiting for us there is an open space where we can discover ourselves, our creativity, our voice, our body, um, our love, our heart. Yeah, yeah. So I think, so what I want us to do now is to, we can, there's so many places we can go. But uh, in order to make it more connected and more concise and, and more, you know, kind of, um clear mm -hmm. and not too long so let's just go into the heart space yeah. and kind of work a little bit with the voice mm -hmm. how it is how this process can translate into working with the heart space and then we can kind of do things that you want to do with the with the, the blank scary paper <laughs> <laughs> for me it's very very scary yeah, and for me, it's singing in front of somebody. So let's just face the fear. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is actually it's so it's so connected to everything, like what we say and what the symbolism of it. Like when we sing now, and if I if I am afraid, my voice will not sound nice. Then this is already the perfect invitation to invite that wild animal of um, self consciousness or fear into the space of it's allowed i can make a fool of myself i can sound really horrible i can sound nice it's not defining who i am and i just can give it space and by overcoming that fear i i can find the freedom to actually play in that vast field and explore myself yeah yeah but you know but it's um we both know that after giving birth that you have to go through a narrow, a narrow tunnel in yeah. the beginning. There's no, you, you can't just jump into the open space. I wish we could, that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but we can't, we have to go through the tunnel, we have to stick our head and somehow, you know, wiggle ourselves uh, there and, uh, and push, sometimes push and rest, push and rest, breathe the whole time, and then we open. So we have to do a process, we have to do a process. and kind of do it again and again with gentleness not with you know 
and do it again and again until we find that light in that open space. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's uh, we do a little bit of yeah, singing. Voice. <laughs> yes, art. Yeah, let's do it. And would you like to just uh, to go straight from the singing that we both start translating that onto the paper? And we could invite our audience to um, do the same and to not judge what appears, to just yeah. let it come out without any expectations of it being a beautiful painting, drawing or whatever, but just expressing that what you felt through singing to just let it flow onto the, you can, so I think we're going to do the session, the voice session. I think I let you decide whether we need to just continue yeah. without speaking. Yeah. Or if you want to say a few words, okay. you can just say a few words. You, you kind of decide what's needed at that time. Yeah, okay. So let's see where it leads us. Yeah. Um, and, and for people that are watching us, so uh, yeah, so join me in this. Yeah. Uh, it's a very little exploration. It's really, sing it's really small, but in the same time, we can spend a lot of time with it because there's so much, so much richness and so many possibilities there. So, whoever is watching us, don't be afraid and just kind of join in and, and just be with us in this because we are doing it between us. But in the same time, we want to open the field to other people to join and and not just to watch us. But yeah. to be a participant. Exactly. Okay. Great. Good. So I'm getting comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> so we close our eyes just for the beginning, just to center ourselves in what we have, where we are, on the chair, and put our hands on our heart space. And just take a few very simple breaths. Try to breathe not from the nose, but from the mouth. Now open our eyes. And just breathe with a bit more, like let the breath and the air just go a bit more deeper into the body. So it doesn't only flow here, just go a bit deeper into the body. Just put a little bit of tension in, in bringing the, the air into all you know, the, the organs that we have here in the, the heart, the lungs, and into the, um, as, God, I remember I forgot my terms. <laughs> the organs of the body <laughs> into the body <laughs> oh my god into the gut into the hips into the bladder into the cervix um the root chakra <laughs> diaphragm which is really diaphragm. important okay. for voice teachers yeah. to know that there's diaphragm and <laughs> <laughs> you're already in the open space beyond words <laughs> don't judge me, don't judge me. So. So bring that air into the body with open eyes. And we can look at, look at each other, Sylvie. Okay, so now we invite um, the first uh, voice to come in. And the voice will come in a way, um, yeah, in the beginning, like the voice comes from us, like obviously not from the outside. So we're taking the voice from ourselves and we kind of drawing it outside of who we are, like outside of our body. And the voice will have the quality of breath. It's not gonna be just a, uh, it's going to be a voice that is very much linked 
to the essence of breath, to that quality of breath. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh. Okay, Sylvie, now you can join me. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm ready, but maybe I was too quiet. Yeah. we do it just sit feel that the voice is coming to different directions outside of us okay so we are as if we really see like a, a bubble a voice bubble coming out of our heart mm -hmm. okay very kind of gently we can have our hand we don't have to use the hand the hand helps mm -hmm. we can to direct it we can only we can also do it without the hand okay Yeah, so I follow, I follow your lead and we use the two hands to really bring it out. Yeah. yeah. Oh. And then we take another another breath and bring an ah inside, okay. back inside the heart. Oh. So now, so we can spend a lot of time, you know, if it was a workshop, we could have get that voice out into the direct and into the space of in, in, with other people to connect with other people to connect with the room to go north and south and east and directions and up and down and really see how uh, how we can connect with voice with the heart voice and it's a beautiful practice you can see very slowly very quickly not slowly very quickly how that um, how it melts that ba the boundaries between people that melt and then you can connect so much easier easily and there's a new language emerges and a sense of trust and a sense of uh, vulnerability and it's a very beautiful process just yeah. imagine that this happened in the room you know and you nice. just after being in a two two hours workshop yeah with only this yeah it could even be implemented in um in workplaces you know in big companies it could it, it could implement in every place, but unfortunately, until today, I never found a place that really need need that implementation that is actually. They do need it. <laughs> they actually do need it. <laughs> you know, in the army, in companies, yeah. in even in schools, even in schools. Yeah, but um, it, yeah, I think it's coming, and uh, we are we are part of passing the way for it. Many people. Yeah. And I think now because we've been uh, we've been on our own for such a long time, I think actually people uh, will connect differently to each other. People realize, you know, how precious it is to have to connect with another human being. Yeah. I think there's two things that happened in this. People realize how precious it is to connect with another human being, and people realize how important it is to have a hairdresser. You know, <laughs> there's two different things. Two things that we really. <laughs> 
hairdresser yeah. and another human being. Yeah. But anyway, let's go back. So, so we experience that connection. That's how you know we connect with the outside all the time. We connect, not in this level, but we do connect with the outside. So yeah. let's take that quality of connection, and we bring it to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in a way, we practice self connection and self love, and we go into the depth. Yeah. Of our own heart. Yeah. And it's like learning to receive as well. Like when you bring it in, you're really like open to, most people are not really totally capable of receiving. I'm including myself. So I think energetically, this is a huge help to be able to receive. Yeah. But even to receive from our own self. Yeah. And I think that's the greatest thing, not to receive from another person, to receive that we are able to yeah. give ourselves what we need. Yeah. We're not waiting for the other person yeah. to give us. But we know that if we, now we need this, we're going to give it to ourselves. And that will be completely yeah, that's uh, good and enough. Yeah, it's, it's complete freedom. And it actually has this side effect that then you connect, like it will come from outside, but from a healthy place of being fulfilled already from inside. And exactly. Not from a place of never being able to fulfill that whole of... Whoa. Uh, and I noticed actually just shortly yeah. when we did it that immediately when we like it was beautiful to penetrate outside to really become vast and then when we turned it around I suddenly was so aware of my heart or of my space and I noticed it's like I was immediately much more in my body because I'm often or like easily getting like up here and I have to look into grounding and that was such an immediate effect. I felt like feeling my body immediately from being everywhere to back mm. to like an anchor or something. I think it's the thing is, is to know how to move between the two worlds, yeah. between yeah. the outside and the inside, yeah. and know how to choose and make the right choice. Yeah. I think a lot of us don't know how to make those choices. Yeah. We are either very much outside or very much inside and not in a healthy way mm -hmm. and then uh, there's and most of us are outside yeah uh, so uh -huh. yeah so if we if we move between the two that will be the greatest journey you know and i actually think uh, it's so beautiful that you chose the heart because that's combining it because do, doing like work with the head or with the root chakra and the heart connects the upper and the lower part the the divine masculine, the sky, and the divine feminine, the earth. So maybe there is a way to be more rather than moving, or moving is it, but also you can um, mingle the two and be in a space of simul simultaneously, like yeah. a heart-brain coherence, basically. This yeah, yeah. Coming oh, totally. yeah. 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 Um... Yeah, like I, at the moment, me and my colleagues are doing a lot of work around the heart and about voice work. That, that there's two, you know, those two worlds, that, like the upper world actually, and the and the and the root and the crown. How do they connect and how they meet in the heart? And this is actually something that happened in in this time in the quarantine that we are doing this work together, uh, the three of us, and it's really really uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. The things that are coming out uh, to you know this research that is coming out nice. um, it's, it's so yeah nice. so let's just go back to do some uh, voice work yeah. that is going into the heart yeah but i have to say one more thing to this aria because yeah. in the beginning when you said uh, the goddess instead of the king or the queen uh you know the saying mother father god because this would actually the times that we're in now from moving from patriarchy into more of a like a feminine feminine energy again, but a feminine energy where it's not the matriarchat and better than the patriarchat, the masculine, but actually as a divine combination of con complementary existence that as a team. So maybe there is a word mother, father, God, or instead of king and queen, kind of some word that this is combined in the hearts, the two worlds of men and women masculine yin and yang and the kingdom yeah. the unity yeah yeah 
Okay, cool. Totally. <laughs> so, um, the depth of our heart. Yeah. We take a breath again. With my mouth open. Yeah. You can close your eyes. And again, we, we invite that sound, the ah sound to come in. So we bring it from the outside with our hand and gently escort it into our heart. So it doesn't have to be a big sound. It can be just very gentle and quiet sound that comes from outside to inside, okay, with our hand and with our intention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we do, we do it a few times and every time, the voice, as if, as if we are in the garden and we are, you know, planting something. Every time the voice goes even deeper. Okay. And so we are like really making a hole in the ground. Yeah. Burying it for the seed. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Yeah. So we can push with our hands and really kind of feel that the voice goes into our body, and the voice it comes in. See if the voice changes quality as it goes deeper it will change color and quality and it's always very, it's, it's very rich. Mm -hmm. so just notice what's happening. So we do it a few times with eyes closed and then we can share mm -hmm. what, what, we, what we saw, what we felt. Okay, okay? yeah. One last one.
So should we share or should we just continue to the blank page? It's uh, bringing me stay as like straight into this field of stillness, like it's almost like I'm not able to speak anymore. So fast. So we could actually, yeah, from that space, it's like maybe I say a few words. If I feel really connected to you now, as if you are here very much. <laughs> and yeah, it's amazing to, to be more in the body and at the same time much vaster than before. That's how it feels for me right now. Mm. And from that space, we can face our fear of the white canvas. <laughs> so if people have um, just a simple piece of paper ready or a pen, and uh, I made a circle, also inspired by you, Avia, because you said, you shared with me last time that a circle had a special meaning for you. And I think it also represents space. And we can just uh, now, like, for example, start to fill it with whatever comes from our heart. And if you have a question, just ask me, like, if something comes up. And, like, I'm doing it, but for people not to just um, draw what I'm drawing, it's really not about how anything looks. Also, for me, I'm like, I'm just going to express how to make, like just follow the lines without having any idea of I'm drawing a horse or something. It's just follow whatever is in your heart right now, in your space. Okay. And we can just do this for two minutes or something, two or three minutes.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just noticed that my survey is too small. It was already filled. <laughs> you a highly skilled painter. Yeah, so I have to maybe next time use a huge canvas or like a, a thinner pen to really do it meditatively longer. No, you can, you can continue and fill it up, no? But this is, this is the thing that I don't want to fill it up because I feel really spacious now. And I want okay. to so I have lots of space. And um, just for demonstration now for this video, I think it's enough even and we can do a session in the evening of yeah, where we just really long with a glass of wine or a cup of tea so that's uh, what i managed to do ah, cool interesting avia nice so far it's interesting that it's similar <laughs> yeah it's from this like this. That, um, yeah uh, like this huh that is isn't that it actually a celtic something well, like a, it's, a, the, it's the eight the eight yeah and it turns into the knot of infinity and and it's like it came like this is what i love how we also discover how all these ancient symbols are actually archetypes or some symbols in our psyche human psyche because i didn't plan to do them and i just did you know this and then suddenly they turned into something that is actually <laughs> Yeah, so you know what I mean, that, that this human psyche has the symbols that actually come out when you are connected to your space and maybe there was something we were connecting to in the space, that's why we drew similar. I think it's a universal uh, symbols and also it's very much when I think about uh, the heart and that imagery of how the heart looks like and how our body looks like, with the veins and that yeah. constant flow, you know. <laughs> Uh, the, the things are pumping blood and pumping, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, pumping uh, oxygen and and all those yeah. uh, materials in our body. So um, it's interesting. This is actually a good example how we activate our creativity and how we connect to that inner richness of our um, symbolic world and what's deep inside every human being by singing and just letting the lines flow and oh my god this is really great you know like to to release stuckness if you think you have a blockage to just do it without expectation and one leads to the next i have to say that it's not easy for me because i you know i look at it and i'm thinking okay so what I'm, i keep on expecting myself to have like the answer okay what is going to be it has to be good it has to be you know and all those uh, uh sentences are you know, it's another trap i know and i know that for you probably you feel that thing about self-conscious about your voice you know can i do the voice can i not does it sound good or it's not pretty enough whatever and then um, I, yeah, I would I would love myself to to be able to get over that in, yeah. with with my painting. I I'm not as bad with my singing with because I'm more trained mm -hmm. and because um but with with other but also with my singing. But mainly with when I do in drawing, I find it like I'm actually getting I'm not enjoying it because. I'm getting completely blocked, you know, with that expectation. So I have to do it this way. I need to be this way. Why did I did uh, why did why did I do this color? And it actually drives me crazy. Yeah. So um, yeah, and I think it's even like when you are an artist for many many years. These are the traps. There are a few traps that every artist falls in, and if you are stuck in it, then you're actually not fully freeing, expressing yourself. So it's an ongoing thing to be aware of those traps and find ways into the freedom again to where you don't judge where you don't try to control and that's where you discover the the true art, uh, art actually that is coming from not from the mind and from looking what others are doing but from this deep rich source of infinite intelligence so yeah and that, that idea that you know that you know you find that voice that knows inside and that voice guides you not all the other you know rubbish yeah. that uh, you were you were taught when you were little or you know people told you uh, you know 
Yeah. Your, your parents told you or society told you that oh, you, have to, you have to be perfect, it has to be good enough, yeah. you're not good enough, all those things. So, so we listen to that voice that is deeper and that voice will actually have, you know, that, you know, um, yeah. I suppose it's the voice of the God, the voice of the goddess. Yeah, yeah I think so too. And it, it's like, the main thing is not to expect to have an total artistic painting it's just about it actually it's simple things like being playful like a child and by that you discover all the miracles and the richness of your creativity and the masterpieces emerge from that being playful and letting it be what it looks like in that moment and i think and in that moment it's an act of love towards yourself yeah exactly going to it yeah, yeah no no this is true it's beautiful yeah and it's not so much about the technique or not at all, because the technique, many get hooked up on the technique as well. But if you approach it, approach it from this place, you actually learn the technique by having fun. It's kind of like you're getting to know what you're drawing in an intimate way without needing to do classes in. I mean, it's also good. You can still enjoy learning about perspective and what colors match and whatever, but uh, it's very quickly leading to being caught up in the mind again. So mm -hmm. just to trust that what, what, just by doing it, your, your skill of creating form will expand and get better from a natural, like an organic way, basically. Much more enjoyable. Okay. So yeah, I think it was a really beautiful start for this, um, to try to understand, uh, to start opening a space of to see how our mind works when we sing when we draw and how by opening a space we start conditioning our mind into into a new reality of creativity so i think we're taking that first steps yeah. uh, of just like opening that space and, and putting in you know opening our attention into a completely different way of um of voicing and into a different way of just drawing intuitively without judging ourselves and really you know be with the blank page without uh, sweating <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I'm, I'm very grateful for me it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity to really open a way to create inside of me with you with your support and with with this dialogue and then true true color and shape and true voice and body i think it's such a beautiful uh, process that i think we only we only started it and I'm just really happy and grateful that we took that step. Yeah, me too, Avia. Yeah. It feels like that I get more um, I understand even better now what what's possible by seeing your work, getting to know your what you have been doing all those years. Suddenly my work makes more sense. So it's it's really interesting. It goes deeper through the co-creation. It's beautiful. And it's a, the sentence came to my head. It's like we, we were surrendering the mind to the heart today. Oh, like, that's beautiful. It's not like cut off. The mind is bad, but it's just surrendered to its true master. <laughs> and they can work together, you know? Totally. And you know, when I, before I came here, I was also very busy and you were very busy. And we both have kids and, you know, life is busy. Even today in Corona times, it's even more busy sometimes. <laughs> So, um, and you know, I didn't, I didn't feel so much my heart, yeah. not so much, but I always, uh, I always, uh, amazed how quickly you can, you can get into that uh, space. You don't have to do a lot. You just make that special, very, you know, just a little, put some time exactly. uh, and just concentrate for a little while, for a very short time, do it with another, with a, with a friend. That's always good to have another friend to do it with because on your own, it's a bit more difficult at uh, the beginning, especially. So even though we weren't in the space, we, we just jump into it and we, we are now in a space of the heart. And sure. this thing, like last time we did it, I actually started to write a song. Wow, really? I haven't finished it. And I just was like, all my creative juices were just flowing. And it was amazing. And then I haven't done it. I actually, it's kind of stuck. But but I feel that if I do a little bit more, I, I will actually finish it. And maybe I will, 
I will sing it to you next time. Oh, nice, Amiya. If I be brave enough. If I be brave enough. So, so I think it's like, it's, we really don't need a lot in order to give ourselves that creative push. Yeah. Um, and if we just take that little step, it, we can just do it and we can so quickly be there. So it's, it's uh, wonderful that we have this and we can do those things. Yeah. Yeah. And we have each other as well. <laughs> nice. All right. Thank you so much, Avia. That was beautiful. Thank you, Sylvie. And we say goodbye to everybody who's watching. And till next time. Huh? Till next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 Shalom. <laughs>